Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. And by the video title, you know what this video is about. Steelers Season Stimulator Simulator Part 2 or 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Um the simulator been doing pretty good for me. This is my second time using it. First time I used it we went, went 11 and 6 on the simulator. They had us um get skunked by the 49ers, which was a little crazy. And this time we went 12 and 5. And they had us going 12 and 5 and 4 and 2 in division. So let's go ahead and break down each game and go through it and this time I actually I know they had this on the list as well they had the stats too they do like a um a simulation of the stats of so the team um stats of some of the players and stuff they only do offense they didn't do defense because I didn't see the defensive side but they did offense uh, so I have some stats too that look a little crazy as well some of them look maybe look a little normal like that well I think gonna happen but some of them look a little like I don't know about that one but starting off first with the 49ers you know the first game still is gonna be at home it hasn't been like that in a while. Like that since we opened up with a home game. Been some years since that happened. Um, I think we have a win streak right now so far. Um, on our like our opener, a win streak like that, a little bit like that. In the first game of the season. I know last year we beat the Bengals. It was a crazy game, a very um like heart wrenching game. Like it was like just went down to the wire, the overtime, the missed field goals, and all the crazy stuff that happened in that game. And then I think the year before that was the, cause Big Ben was there. Who who was? Who did play the first the first game? The Bengals won of those season. I think I think was the Bengals that that season uh, the other season. Jesse Justin caught the little touchdown on the side. I, it might have been that year the the one um, with the Bengals like that. I mean not the Bengals the um the Bills the Bills. It might have been that year the Bills. I think we played in Buffalo. And then another one I know we played the we played the Giants. It was the Giants before too. I remember um that's when Big Ben first came back. So I think it was the Bills one. Yeah. I like that so when we um find a way to win that one like that and the thriller coming back and stuff. But I think we're gonna win this first game like that. But the simulator got us losing thirteen to eighteen. So yeah. I you know, um thirteen to eighteen, like that'd be a little lackluster way to start the season off, you know, only scoring thirteen points and stuff. Um but I think we can pull this game off. I think the game gonna be very close because it's, it's really about the battle of the defense is really with the Steelers and the 49ers. I think um our defense and their defense are neck and neck like that. But I think um, we have just a little bit more experience. Just a little bit more experience to get the job done. And we are home too, so it might give us a little um, bit over the edge to win the game. But they got us losing 13-18. Next game against Cleveland, um, the, I'm going to say the Cavaliers, the Cleveland Browns. Well, we they got us winning 26-20. to So I, I can take that one as well. Like that, um, the Browns do have a nice roster. You look at their roster, they got a lot of guys on the roster. Then they got everybody. They got um a star-studded team from Sean Watson, from Nick Chubb, from David Njoku, from Amari Cooper, from all these different guys. I think Jonathan People Jones is still there as well. Like that's um he's a, a solid receiver too. They got a lot of guys. The old line is very good. They can run the ball at will. Like that, and their defense is good. You know Miles Garrett, one of the best edge rushers. I think T.J. Watt, Nick Bosa, Miles Garrett are the three best ones who can get in there, get to the quarterback. Like that. So they got a lot of guys on that team. You know. On um, Denzel Ward and stuff, but he ain't put it together. That's the question. They've been um, asking themselves for the past few years. I know Deshaun Watson got there last year. He missed like two, three, almost three years of football, so he's a little rusty. But I think this year, um, he might be have his bearing underneath him a little bit better. He got Mark Cooper out there. He got David Joku. Got some good a goal line. Got a good running game. I think he can get back to being um, Deshaun Watson that they know the three time or four time Pro Bowler that he was. So I think he can get back to doing that. Um, but. The Steelers um, they got us winning this game 26 to 20. Okay, at Las Vegas against the Raiders, they got us winning 31 24. That should be a nice one. Last year was a very good game. That Christmas game was crazy. Um, the game winning touchdown, you know, like um, Kenny Pickett getting the ball to George Pickens for the game winning um, score. Um, that right there was an amazing drive. I think that was one of one of four of Kenny game winning drives he had that, that season, like that. And that right there was a clutch one because you get the ball back, you're down. And you have to go for it every time like that because you lose the if you don't score on this um, drive or score a touchdown like that you might not get the ball back or not that you never know what could happen and then the playoff hopes are still alive because that's a still that's when we were still kind of in playoff contention as well like that we um was, had to win out and stuff like that to have a chance and hopefully the um we need, we needed the Jets to beat the Dolphins and stuff for us to get in so the Steelers was doing what they did it was doing what they did a little bit and then you know um the Raiders made made a play to the lead can they pick it got back out there. Went out there with the game winning um, drive, you know, four down, getting the play to get the first down and all that stuff. And then in the, in the red zone, dropping back, finding George Pickens across the middle. And that right there was a spectacular moment right there. And um, I think 
this one, they got the score 31 24, so it might be something similar. Maybe uh, another game winning drive for Kenny Pickett is in store. It's only a one score game, so it'll probably come down to the wire. I think most of our games always do come down to the wire because that's the way we, the style we play it. We play greedy, we play tough. You know, we might, we might, now we got a lot of talent on our team. But, you know, the past few years, the talent kind of been, you know, the retiring or going somewhere else, you know, the money getting a little tight and stuff. Um, so we have to play teams kind of like gritty and tough and just keep the score close and try to take it out in the fourth. But now with the more talent on our team, the more young guys on our team we got, uh, I think we should be able to go out there and, you know, and score pretty good. Next, we got the Houston um, Texans. They said we got, they got us winning 24 to 10. Then they got us going, uh, playing against the Baltimore Ravens at home. Um, they got us losing that one, 11 to 30. That'd be crazy. 11, yeah, the way you have to score, you have, you have to score a touchdown. And then, well, actually, you probably, have, you probably have to score. You probably have to score a touchdown, but miss the PAT. And then you have six, so then you kick a field goal, and then you get a safety, you get 11, like that. And probably other ways you can get 11, too, as well. But uh, 11 30 is a weird score, but I don't see. I guess getting smoke, smoke like that at home. That'd be crazy, like that. But um, I don't think that's going to happen, like that. But they got us losing to the Ravens, 11 to 30. I can't see that one happening. And then, guys, um, then we got a bye week, week six. I wish the bye week was a little further down the line, but I guess week six is all right. I, I prefer, like, like in the middle of the season, like week nine, and it's like that, right at that time. Uh, that's what I feel like better for a bye week to get recover, or so guys can recoup and recover as well. And especially, like, it's like in the middle of the season, so you can see up a mid analysis of what's going on so far. Um, then we got us at the Rams. They got us winning that 16 to 14 in a close game. Um, then they got us beating the Jaguars 27 to 22. In a close game as well. They got us beat losing to the Titans. We haven't, we haven't lost to the Titans. See, we haven't lost to the Titans in a long time. I'm trying to think. When was the last time the Titans beat us? Uh, I don't even remember when the last time the Titans beat us because I know we beat them. I know we beat them. You no, know, um, that the one year Joe Hayden, remember he came back with the big time tackle like that. We beat them then. And then one year when he was undefeated, we was undefeated. We beat them with stuff in Derrick Henry at the line. And then the, the, the Titans missing the field goal and stuff. We beat them then. I know that we beat them with the Terry Brown, the, the helmet catch. I remember they had Zach Minterberger. I think Le'Veon Bell, he had like a crazy game that game. And we beat them then. I, I, I don't know when the last time the Titans beat us, actually. I don't, I don't know. So I, I can't see the Titans beating us anytime soon like that. And the Titans on decline a little bit, slightly a little bit, because the quarterback situation and the O-line, I got to get the O-line right again, a lot of unhealthy guys and injured guys. And then, of course, the receiving core is not the best. I guess so, yeah, like, you got to build that up a little bit. They kind of did that in the draft a little bit, you know. So we're going to see how things shape out. But they got us losing to the Titans 24-26 and close one. I think we can win that one, though. But um, Green Bay, they got us winning 9-7. That right there was a crazy score. But, you know, some some stiller games, it'd be like some crazy games. You'd be like, um, you, you come in and be like, oh, we're going we gonna to win this game by a lot. We're going to go crazy in this game. And then we kind of, like, just win by a little bit. I don't, as long as we win, I ain't, I'm not tripping. So if we um win 9-7, that's okay with me. That's a little weird, weird score. That means we kicked um, all field goals, really, unless we, unless we um score a touchdown and miss the PAT and they kick the field goal. But I'll take it. It's a win. Um, we had one of those in the playoffs. Our last playoff game was all field goals. Remember, um, Chris Boswell hitting six of them to help us beat the Chiefs in the division round to get to the AFC um, title game. Um, then we got the um, I want to say Cavaliers again. We got the Browns. The um, Steelers beating the Browns. They said seventeen to ten. Um, on the road, then they got us beating the Cincinnati Bengals, sixteen to ten on the road. Um, then they got us losing to the Patriots. Yeah, I, I felt, felt like when I did the, the thing myself, like going through this on um, the schedule, I had us losing, you know, one to the Bengals. I had us losing one to the. I had us losing the Patriots. I had us losing one to the Bengals. I had us also losing. Um, one to the Ravens. One to the Ravens as well. Well, actually, I think I think they had to pay Browns. I think yeah, one to the Browns. I think they paid one to the Browns, one to the Bengals, and then one. And then I was losing to the um the Patriots, and I chose some other teams too. I feel like the Steelers might have a um, it might be tripping like the Jaguars. I think you lose to them, maybe like that, and it'd be one the fluky one. Maybe the Titans one is the fluky one. You'd be like, how we lose that game? And like certain games, you'd be like, how we lose that one? But I think the Steelers could probably lose five at least five games like that. But hey, you can still make the playoffs twelve and five. That that's very good like that. As long as we, as long as we um, double our losses, we'll be good. Okay, um, the next one is um, Cincinnati. They got us losing to Cincinnati. So we, they got us beating them at their home, and they got us losing at our home 10-23. to And then on the last game of the season against um, Baltimore on the road, they got us winning 2013 and us finishing with a 12-5 and record 
uh, four and two in the division. So I can see that happening like that. That's why I have the prediction for the Steelers. Cause, you know, last year I was kind of psyching myself up. Like I mentioned before, I was trying to like overhype Mr. Trubisky a little bit in some of the videos. That was all, that's all I was like, eh. I was like, when like you saw, my, you want to go back and watch that my first initial reaction when Mitchell Bisky was um, signed. I was like, uh, I don't really like it because I thought maybe he could get another guy, you know, maybe like a Jacoby Brissett because remember he was available and then Terod Taylor. I know he have injury problems, but he's he's on more reliable and more consistent like that. And then you know Marcus Mariota, somebody I thought like maybe those guys would be more reliable. Um, then Mr. Bisky, I, I don't really like Mr. Bisky. Um, fully, I was like, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, cheer for him because he's on the team and stuff like that. But I was like, yeah, it didn't work out too well. And then I kind of hyped the overhyped the season because like it's a rebuild year a little bit. I was like, nah, we can still go out there and compete. And you know, it's kind of like guys have to learn little new things and new coaching on the defensive side. You know, the injuries that happened and stuff like that, and you know, um, the lack of depth we had too. But this year, the Steelers kind of fixed all that. We got better old line like that, adding um big time guys like Sam Alu and Herb Big, and you know. Drafting Broderick Jones in the first round and stuff. And then also going out there and adding Allen Robinson to the receiving core. So you have GP, you have Denton Johnson, Allen Robinson. Drafting Darnell Washington. So you have Pat and Darnell Washington. I think Zach Gentry is still on the team as well, too. And then you got Najee Harris there, of course, Dylan Warren. And then, of course, on defense, getting Patrick Peterson added. Adding um, Cole Holocomb. Adding um, Elan Roberts, another guy who can get downhill and help stop the run. And then all the guys, and then the defensive guys you added, too, like Benin. And all the other guys you added on the D-line and stuff. And then, of course, JPJ drafting him was nice, too. So I feel like the Steelers went out there and added a lot of key pieces and got a lot more depth this year. So I feel more confident in saying, like, we can go 12-5 and five or 11-6 and six around that range um, this season and actually make some noise a little bit. Because last season, we were kind of overhyped. You know you overhype it like that, kind of make kind of to pump yourself up, but you kind of just pump yourself up for failure a little bit. But I think this year, I actually have faith and confidence in the team to actually go out there and compete and be good like that. My only question, really... It's just um I want to see how uh, I wonder how Kenny Pickett gonna look in year two like that uh, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna do well I think I don't, I don't think gonna be like anything monstrous like he going out there in like 4,500 and 40 touchdowns I think he'd be like in the moderate like 38 3,900 um maybe 23 24 touchdowns maybe like eight interceptions and like four or five rushing touchdowns we're like okay that's we can live with that you can definitely win with that and like like oh he's on um, pretty good like type of like, the good type stuff i think maybe later down the line might see him get more like that but i think next year i looked at him the score like around that range and now for the on um, season stat predictions the ones they had on the simulator they had kenny pickett throwing 3648 passing yards which is not bad that means we probably run the ball a lot which is good too they had him throwing 15 passing touchdowns, which was, was a little low like that in 17 games like that. I think he can probably get to 20, but only five interceptions, which is good. So 15 to five is a good ratio, kind of like a Daniel Jones here a little bit. And they had him rushing for four touchdowns with 66 completion percentage. So the numbers look pretty all right. You know, the touchdowns a little low. Like the passes a little low, but he did score four rushing touchdowns in the simulator and had a 66 completion percentage. It was 66.9. So you can say so you can really round up to 67. Like that, so that's pretty good. And then he had this was a shocking one right here. In the receiving court, he had DJ with 108 catches, five receiving touchdowns, and 1,135 receiving yards. And then he had GP with 47 catches, three touchdowns, and 660 receiving yards. I'd rather switch that a little bit. I think GP gonna be the one with the I don't think he'll get 100 catches, but I think he don't really need that because the way his um, play style is, vertical threat down the field, a deep threat type receiver. I think it's more like 70 catches, 75 catches, but he had like 1,200 yards and probably eight touchdowns. I think DJ will be more around like the between 850 to 1,000 range. Like they know around that range like that because he, I look, I look at DJ as a guy who is, you know, a good receiver. He's good, like he's like Pro Bowl level, like good receiver. But I don't look at him as like elite level, like a guy who can just take over the game. I think GP has a chance to be that elite level guy like that, you know, because it's elite level guys on division. You know, you got a guy like Jamar Chase, elite level. I think T. Higgins is basically elite level too as well. You see what he does as well. I think GP can be on that level too. Um, his first year he looked pretty good, had 860 receiving yards, and then second year we're gonna see how he uh, makes that next jump, especially him starting the full entire time as well. I think it'd be nice. They had Pat Fryer move at 529 yards. I think he can get more than that this year. Uh, I think maybe 700, but I think he's going to have a lot of touchdowns this year. I think this will be the year he get more touchdowns and stuff. Um, maybe a Pro Bowl year. I know you got Travis Kelsey and um, we got Mark Andrews in this conference, so getting the Pro Bowl will be a little difficult, but you never know what could happen. Uh, then they had Najee. Remember, if you guys haven't seen, um, you should go to the you know, Stonehenge Australia channel. We did, we did a collab video last Sunday um, talking about... Um, 
the bold predictions. And my bold prediction, my main one. The other ones I, I made, like I was just um saying stuff like that too. It was some good ones too. But I think the my main one is Najee Harris winning Offensive Player of the Year. That's my dark horse pick right there for Offensive Player of the Year. I think Najee Harris got a chance to win it. And in the simulator, they got him rushing for two hundred. They had him well, with two hundred eighty-eight rushes for one thousand six hundred ninety-one scrimmage yards. 10 rushing touchdowns and 1,444 rushing yards, which is very good. Like that. And you get that. I don't know if that's enough to win Offensive Player of the Year. Like that, but it's a lot of, that's a lot of yards. I had him um, at um, 1,300 rushing yards, but I had him scoring 20 total touchdowns. I think I had him close to like maybe like 1,800 scrimmage yards with um, 1,300 of them being rushing yards and him scoring about 15 rushing touchdowns and five receiving touchdowns to get 20 total and be offensive player of the year. I know it's a little bold like that, but if the, we can run the ball if we want to, and the goal line, you got a guy like Najee, 240 pounds, you know, just get the ball to him. Let him go in there like that through the middle. But that's all that they had on the prediction thing for the simulator stuff. They got all these crazy – is that upside down? I know this is, like, this is like inverted like that, a little weird. But um, that's all they, got, that's all they had for the, um, for the thing. It's all right Um, the way they had the, the numbers a little bit. It's kind of like in par a little bit with the – players might do i think they might do i don't think i would switch around of course with the dj and gp because i don't think that would be the case like that but everything else is on straight pretty straight they had on general warren also on here with 612 scrimmage yards um i was like that ain't bad either like that so that'd be nice they had darnell washington scoring touchdown too as well i think darnell washington can get at least five touchdowns i think at least five i think i think the bowl prediction video i'm gonna put the link in the in the um, comment section and description and stuff i think um i said darnell washington get five i said five to eight touchdowns i think I feel like in the red zone, he, they use him as an extra blocker. He might leak out and get some easy touchdowns. I don't know if he's going to have a lot of yards, maybe like 100 yards, 200 yards maybe. Like that, but I think he's going to have a lot. I think he's going to have some good amount of touchdowns, like five touchdowns at least. I think it's going to be something um pretty cool. But that's all I got for this video today, guys. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out. Doo -doo.